most interesting character trait was actually, for me, in the first part, in part one. Uh, it's what really captured my imagination with Nora because she was told by Torvald that she couldn't eat chocolates or macaroons, so she would secretly eat them when Torvald uh, wasn't looking. And I think that kind of you know, cheekiness, as she sort of became her own person, she sort of keeps that that sense of humor and that, that cheekiness um, and that joy of, of causing a bit of trouble. For me, it was important to look back and see who she was when she left. That's definitely important. But then to be able to leave that and then create a kind of a new character, because she even talks about uh, in in the book she writes, the character she writes about sort of sheds her old life and gets reborn as something else. So you get to sort of think about who she would be if she was reborn. So in a way, they're separate, but one of them is kind of the cocoon and the other one is the or very strong butterfly or moth or bird or stronger bird maybe than when she was the little baby bird that, that Torvald used to call her yeah. uh, when she was in the first part. Nora spent so much time uh, worrying about the fact that she doesn't want to be a part of the kid's life because she doesn't want to upset them or, or cause any problem and it's better that she separated herself and there was a real reason that she really believed in of why she left the kids and why she thought it was better that she left the kids. She was doing them a favor, taking herself out of their lives. Um, but when she comes back with Emmy and she's confronted with someone who is not bothered at all that she was seemingly not bothered at all that she left. I think that's a real shock for her to see that strength manifested in her daughter, um, but in a way that is almost um, like an alien to Nora, especially who Nora is now and who she was when she was that age because she was really flighty and, and uh, wearing her heart on her sleeve um, and to see Emmy be the exact opposite of that. She seems like she's coming from some other planet to Nora until she finds out what's underneath that and that, that they really do have a lot of uh, in common. And she is quite an emotional her person. She has a lot of text. <laughs> she has a lot to say. Um, and as an actor, allowing yourself to just be able to let the character talk that much and not sort of on the back of your mind going, Oh God, here she goes again. Um, but remembering that there was that period of time that Nora didn't speak, that she didn't have her own voice, and that now being able to have her voice and, and say her opinion is really important to her, and allowing her to do that and not having the actor judge on top of it, um, you know, worrying about what people are going to think about Nora because she's talking so much, and just letting her character be what it is because she she does come across very strong. She, um, you know, as a lot of women who are sort of um, want to show their, their, their strength to the world and they're not ashamed of it, it can be quite um, abrasive at times, um, especially trying to defend herself. Yeah. And also, I'm not a, you know, I'm a person who, in my life, I try to shy away from confrontation. I'm not a confrontational person. Um, so it's fun to be able to play a person who can take a confrontation really like, you know, square on. Whereas I sort of would rather run away or cry or, or you know, make sure everyone's okay. Yeah. I, I like to research. So I bought a book by a writer uh, who was writing about the same time as Nora would have been writing that's called The Morality of Marriage. Um, so I will sometimes, uh, before rehearsal or when I'm working through something or I'm feeling stressed, I'll go back and read a section of that book and imagine that that's the book that Nora wrote. about the state of their marriages, uh, thinking about that future, um, because, you know, Nora says it's 20, 30 years from now, um, and 
I don't know, I feel like right now with the new generation um, of young people, I do feel now this 20, 30 years from now, I, I feel it happening now, perhaps not by the time Laura, but Laura, Laura was walking out the door. Um, but 20, 30 years from now, it could be that marriage is a thing of the past or that people start to, to approach the idea of, of spending their lives with, with one person uh, in a different way, not in a way because it's a societal pressure or something you feel like you should do, but being very aware of respecting each other's freedom.